Hey, thank you for watching this video. There's more online at Embark Online. You can tweet me, and of course, here's the pie guy. All right, this is fourth grade, module five, lesson 23. And in this lesson, students are gonna be using addition and multiply, um, multiplying unit fractions to build fractions greater than one. What does that mean? Okay, basically what that means is students are eventually going to be understanding why um, uh, nine-fourths is equal to two and one-fourths. So this lesson is going to feel a little laborious for us old fogies like parents and teachers who learned the old way uh, because we know, oh, nine fourths, well, four goes into nine twice with one left over, so that's why it's two and one fourth. Um, but the idea is students were growing up not really understanding why that is. They just knew it was the rule. And so the idea of this lesson is to teach students why that is uh, using some visual models, specifically the number line. It's not the only way that we could teach uh, this concept for understanding. We could use tape diagrams, we could use coins. There's a variety of ways that we could approach it. Uh, I'm going to maybe throw some of those ideas in as we talk about the number lines that, that Eureka Math is talking about. So let's get started on that. So we're gonna start with some baby steps. Count by sixths and stop at 14 sixths. So you have zero sixths, one sixth, two sixths, three sixths, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen sixths, right? So we're, all of these were supposed to be under with a six in the denominator because these are sixths that we were talking about. And then it said we were supposed to uh, circle any fractions that are equivalent to one whole. Uh, so you could say, well, six sixths is a whole, and we could actually say zero sixths, because zero um, is a whole number, right? So zero set sixths, six sixths, twelve sixths, um, and then so there, there we go. So this is a baby step way of starting to show how fractions live on the number line. So we could say, okay, so here's one sixth, two sixth, three, four, five, six sixths, and we know that six sixths is equal to one. So we're going to keep going. Seven sixths, eight, nine, ten, eleven sixths, twelve sixths. So here's twelve sixths. That's equual to two. And then we've got 12 sixths, so 13 sixths, 14 sixths. So if we wanted to, we could have stopped and then, oh, look at that, 14 sixths is equal to two and two sixths. Why is it two sixths? Because it's one, two little baby unit steps beyond the two, all right? So that's essentially where we are leading towards uh, by this idea. Here, um, what Eureka wants us to do is understand that really kind of what I did in the previous slide is we're looking for whole numbers. So in this case, because the denominator is three, that we need three thirds to create one whole. So there's one whole. And then here's three thirds. That equals a whole. And here's three thirds. That equals a whole. And then here's three thirds. And that equals a whole. And that's how we get four. Now here we're going to kind of speed things up a little bit by drawing a number line to show what the heck we're talking about. So the idea is, uh, let's do problem B down here. So we've got our number line, and I'm going to draw it right here. All right, so here's zero. And we know that for every two halves, that equals one whole. So here's a half. And here's a second half, so that is one whole. So two times one half gives us a whole. Here's a half, here's another half, so there's two. So that's another two times one half. Here's a half, here's a half, so that's three. So that's another two times one half. That's a half, that's a half. <laughs> I'm sort of running out of room. So that's another two times one half. And then, oh, that's four. 
and then that's a half, that's a half, so that's 5, so that's another 2 times 1 half. So the idea is we started out with 10 copies of 1 half, but that those 10 copies of 1 half could be 5 copies of 2 halves, because here's 2 halves, Here's two halves, here's two halves, two halves, and two. We have five copies of two halves. And so five copies of two halves is equal to five. All right. Now if that you didn't if your students are struggling with that, you could connect this with our previous slide and have one half plus one half plus one half. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh my goodness, I'm squeezing these in here. These are halves, and I'm adding 10 of them. And if I wanted to, i got to put in my little plus signs here. Plus, 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 plus. Okay, and then we say, okay, two halves equals a whole. Two halves equal a whole. Two halves equal a whole. Two halves equal a whole. And two halves equal a whole. We now have five holes. So that's another way that you could have shown it. Uh, moving forward, uh, just more of the same, same kind of concept. What's different this time is we're not going to end up with a nice, beautiful whole number. We're actually going to have a mixed number. So let's talk about seven copies of one-fourth. So I'm going to begin with our number line. And I'm going to start at zero. And we know that one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, four-fourths. So four-fourths is one whole. And I'm going to do 5 fourths, 6 fourths, 7 fourths, 8 fourths. Well, there's 8 fourths is equal to 2 wholes. And now I've gone too far because we only have to have, we only needed 7 copies of 1 fourth. So we know that these 4 copies of 1 fourth, that's 4 copies of 1 fourth. So that equals 1 whole. And then we had just these three extra little fourths because we were, remember, we were only supposed to go up to seven copies of one-fourth. And so what do we have? We ended up with one whole, and this little piece right here, so that's one whole, and then this little piece right here is three-fourths. So seven copies of one-fourth is equal to one whole, and three-fourths. Now how would we notate that using the numbers method that they wanted us to show? Well, seven copies of one-fourth is equal to four copies of four-fourths. Oops, whoa, 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 whoa. It's four copies of, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's one copy one copy of four-fourths. Now, where did I get that? One copy of four-fourths. That came right here. One copy of four-fourths plus we have the extra little three-fourths left over. Where did that come from? That's this little piece right here. So one copy of four-fourths plus three little fourths left over equals one and three-fourths. Hey, parents and teachers, if your kids are struggling with this at this point, keep going uh, because this is kind of giving them an opportunity to think about the mathematics in a, a way that is different from the way you and I learned. But ultimately, uh, there's other diagrams we could show. For example, um, 7 times 1 fourth could be modeled with a tape diagram. And you could say that, well, 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, 4 fourths equals one whole, and then one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, four-fourths, another four-fourths equals another whole. But if we only want seven-fourths, that's going to be one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, four-fourths. So that's one whole. And then one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths more. So there's our seven copies of one-fourth 
So our answer is one whole plus three-fourths. That's another way that we can model this on an ongoing tape diagram that isn't really finished, right? It's kind of like a, a, in a procession. It's in a continuum, I suppose, kind of like a number line. One last example, nine times a fifth. A couple of ways you could do this. So I'm going to start with a number line. Start with zero. One fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths. So there's one hole. And that one hole is five fifths. And then we want nine copies of one fifth. So that means we're going to go one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths more. If we had another five fifths right there, that would be ten fifths, and that's two. But we don't have ten copies of one fifth. We have nine copies of one fifth. So nine fifths is right here. So what does that mean? That means we have one hole, that's this piece right here, and then we have these four fifths left over. Not quite enough for another hole. So nine fifths is equal to one hole plus four fifths. There's some other ways that we could notate this using some perfectly fine math notation. We could say nine fifths, nine copies of one fifth is equal to nine fifths, and that's really five fifths plus four fifths, and that's one plus four fifths. So there's a variety of ways that we could show how nine fifths is equivalent to one and four fifths. And that wraps up a kind of a tricky one. Fourth grade, module five, lesson 23. I think it's probably more tricky for the adults, the, us old fogies who learned the old way of turning what we used to call improper fractions, now it's just a fraction greater than one, into a mixed number such as one and four fifths.